Welcome to Still Plays Galaxy of Heroes. This is Grand Arena, the final match week two, season 34. We got the matchup I wanted. We are going for 3-0 this week, and in order to get there, we have to get through a guild mate. So this is going to be a fun match and a good match, and I've been alluding to this through the first couple matches because the possibility was there, and I'm happy to see it. So I, I have touched on some of it. He's got some, a really nice roster with some excellent mods, so it's going to be a good match. But first, a quick recap for last round. This was the win against CT555. My defense performed excellently in this match here. Unable to clear the back wall, and he had some trouble on the front wall. Needed two shots up against Mon Mothma. This guy had a really nice roster where Lord Vader was giving him a lot of wins, especially for his GP, because he was only like 5.6 or so million GP, so very shallow for Kyber, especially at Kyber 3, two shots up against Grievous. And I think Lord Vader was securing a lot of those wins. That's the value of going after those recent GLs. But he was a much shallower roster because of it, because he's performing at these levels so early. I think that's what we ultimately see here. After having to use multiple attempts against a few of these squads, I think it just ran out between defense and offense. And then Fleet here only attempted up against Chimera and most of the rest of his fleet was on defense. For Pork Bubbles here, we are, so the guild's the same obviously. Zetas, he's got a little bit more, but at, at above like 170, I think we start getting to a nice luxury range, maybe even 150. Omicrons, he has one extra, but I think this is worth pointing out because he's much more concentrated than my Omicrons are. Like his Melgus and his Starkiller both have all three Amis. I've spread mine out a little bit more because I think there's marginal gains with a second or third Omicron on Melgus and Starkiller that don't off offset or outperform some of those Omicrons and other squads. And we'll highlight some of the ones that he doesn't have because of what he has placed those Omicrons on. The Relic units, he's got extra depth than me but not terrifyingly so. In Kyber 2, we're more used to seeing 120, 130, so this is manageable. You can see with the Gear 11 Plus, he's not as deep as I am, but where I usually have an advantage in mods, I don't at all here. We are pretty much nearly identical when it comes to these, except for the 25 plus speed average mods where he outperforms me having an extra 14. Whereas the 20 plus, 15 plus, we're pretty close within less than a handful. And overall counts, same, not that far off. And in terms of the speed averages themselves, that's also pretty close. Datacrons is another place where we're pretty similar. I have more a higher count total, but when we look at like, the quality of the specific mods, it's less so. And he doesn't have Lord Vader or a lot of the dark side characters that are the beneficiaries of the current set data sets. So it's not as scary. Like my level nine data comes, we got Vader, but the other one on, on Dash, I'm not really utilizing right now. So the, it's a little misleading to say too, and I'm not sure what his specifics are. When it comes to GLs, he has the advantage. I only have two. And it really depends on how he's gonna use them, whether it's a problem. Usually four is fairly manageable for me, as long as my opponent doesn't place both Jedi. My Jedi versus another set of Jedi, that's a little bit harder to deal with than messing around with Sith Eternal Upper Ray or SLKR where there's more alternatives. Omicrons, here's where we start seeing some of those differences. You can see with Melgus here, I only have two, he's got three. He does have the Radis Ami, which that might affect my play, maybe not, I'm not certain. But you can see he does not have Aiden. That is, that Aiden requires it, Radis doesn't. That's part of the reason why I haven't applied mine. 
Star Killer is another place where he has all three. He also has dashes and then... But the other thing to pay attention to is the relic levels on these characters. I'd rather have the relic 7 Melgus with only two Omicrons than a relic 3 with all three Omicrons. We see the same thing with Star Killer. His is relic 6 and Wampa here at, at rel, uh, only Relic 3, whereas I have Relic 7. And then he does not have the Omicron on Savage. I'd put it on regardless of gear level. Really gear 11 plus, he's slight, especially with how easy gear is these days. With the rest of these characters, his Maul, same thing. This is where one of the spots where I'm a little stronger is some of these key characters I have at higher relics. So like Maul here at higher relics, although he does have the better cat. And he has really good speeds on a lot of these characters. And then the other key place is the profundity here. He has a seven star profundity, whereas I'm still working with a five star one. Here with the hotbot, he probably has slightly more red on his side, but we're going back and forth. The undersizes and the clears, that's one of the spots I care about. And you can see this is another spot where we're pretty close. I've got small advantages, not even advantage isn't really the proper word, but I have slightly more clears and undersizes, but not really that much. And for me, that's a serious metric. That just tells me how well do you know the game? How comfortable are you with riskier moves? How well do you know your roster? And right there, he's performing very well. When we move further down into the mod, we already looked at the mod analysis. The relic levels here is what I do want to pay attention to. What I do find interesting, this is probably because he has additional GLs over me, is he has a very high relic 7 count, and even relic 8, even though some of the characters who I think deserve it don't have them. So. It might be something where if I looked a little bit deeper into some of those Relic 7s, maybe early on he was giving some excessive Relic levels to characters that might not deserve it. Or maybe they do, or maybe they're required for other things. That's something that needs deeper analysis to know. Further down below, he's got advantages on speed with all these characters. His JML is faster, JMK is faster. Further down, we see the same thing when it comes down to each of these characters. He has advantages, but we don't play mirrors, so this is something that it's nice to know where these characters land, but I'm less, I'm never all that concerned about it. I've got Swallow, he doesn't, and the rest of that's pretty good. Now with the def, or we gotta look at the speed average. When we look at him in detail, he's very deep with 300 plus speed characters. Like, much more than me. He's, they're very well modded at the top end. I think he has 26 characters here are 300 plus speed averages. Piet is at 302. I think Shakti is just under 300. So all these other characters are close to 300. But that's really good. Very well modded, much more than what I have. I'm in the, I think I have like 19 or 20. Now with defense, we both opted to not really change our strategies. He knew this was coming, that we had this match. And with GLs, how they are these days, I I don't really change my strategy too much just because I don't have the flexibility to. I'm not deep enough at the high end where I can afford to put more of my offensive weapons on defense. He could have changed his strategy. He didn't, so we were both able to look at our each other's histories and prepare here whether or not he has I don't know but one thing that is different from last week is I do I have boosted up this first order squad a little bit with the Omicron on first order tie pilot the only change I made from the earlier matches is on the back wall here I took off Treya with the Savage on me because I want to use it on offense and threw down Sana this is pro this is not going to do much. Sana is really easy to take out, much more of an offensive weapon, and I think they'll be. She'll be a good squad at higher star and gear counts or at relics, but at three stars, kind of what I was finding with some of these other newer release characters, is they're not really low star viable. But I still threw it down because it's unfamiliar, and maybe it trips them up. Probably not. 
The rest is the same, so we're not going to click through it. You can look at the defense or the recap from the last match if you want to see that in detail. What he has set down here, though. Aiden, though, without the Omicron, so this isn't going to be much of a threat. Radis here with the Omicron, that I'm much more concerned about. Maul, Starkiller. And then down below we have CLS and Melgus paired with Qui-Gon and Phasma. On the back wall, I'm expecting Mon Mothma, Dash, and Wedge. Or Wig. It's a Wigs team, essentially. So really, he did me a favor by not putting any GLs down. I mean, technically, he could be trying to surprise me on the back wall, but I'm just doubting that. I think that... It'll be safe for me to use some teams up front and not save them for the back wall. Because I think what is going to happen in this match is it's going to come down to banners and probably fleets. Because he has the better fleet. And I couldn't check his fleet history in the Grand Arena history because nobody's cleared his... No one had even really attacked his fleet. They just got to his fleet and didn't even bother to attack. So I don't really know what's back there. And he is deep enough there with relics on enough enough squads where the efficiency battle and taking out fleets is probably what is going to decide this match. Now we're gonna just, let's just start at the top with Melgus. We're just gonna do the safe and JMK it. And if he's trying to trick me by changing up his back wall, then that would be very smart. Mace. What have I been doing? Let's do Shakti and Kenobi. And I can't believe we're not going to have any light side data crumbs in nine days. Trusting blue stacks right now. It is also possible that Jawas could cost me this match. I want to leave the taunt there, so I'm just gonna target Malak. Um maybe what is how does that work again? Because if we get rid of it, she's going to get fear or something, right? So I don't want to do that, I think. Let's clear the... Sh yeah, let's clear the shock. I, I want him to be able to taunt. Although we cleared everybody, so that... Yeah, and we lost her turn because of that. Not a huge deal. Trigger a drain life, and he's gonna. Eh, I'm just gonna do it. Just in case the cooldowns are messed up, I'm throwing this back on on cat, and we're not taunting. Great, great. Okay, now we can take out Melgus, but this has taken a while so far. I'm not getting assists. I'm a little concerned about the clock. We've been deliberating a while. 
Okay, there goes Melgus. Maybe I was over cautious, but I'm okay with it. I'm glad to be back in a position where I can be using JMK up against Melgus and not messing around with some of the other counters because that can get a little sloppy. For the last, I don't know, two or three of these, I've been forced to use other characters and it's... We had one successful one with Gas, we had one that wasn't successful with Gas, cleaning up with other characters, we had GML go well and not go well. All right. We're gonna do my thing here, which is Night Sisters, which could go poorly, especially up against this version. But he's set down, even though he hasn't set down GLs, he's still set down a lot of good squads that if I, I don't wanna take something better up against this because it would start compromising the rest of my offensive plans. I want him to take the the AoE, but I want to clear the foresight. But now I'm going to leave him alone. But we'll focus on Kiyadi Mundi. We don't want Kiyadi Mundi to uh, start landing armor shreds. And then try and keep him under stun while we get our stacks. I'm gonna heal, even though I hate putting that into cooldowns. Because it's a like four turn cooldown on that heal is ridiculous. But I can't have DACA be compromised. Alright, that's both sacrifices. We're gonna clear the foresights. Because Anakin was about to go. Stuns. Now we're just churning. Although I feel like this has started off slow. I'm a little concerned about the clock. Because we need more time to see. We're not even close on stacks right now. Like this is. But yeah, okay, we lost it. Risky. We'll come back to it. Phasma here. What was my plan? Maul? I was going to do Maul. It's a lot. I should have brought Malik to offense. Hmm. Okay. Because yeah. we can't hide in that, they heal too much. Nest won't work. 
with the Ami, they're going to go too fast for some of the other things. Am I really going to do Maul? I guess the question is, do I really want to do Starkiller up against CLS? Because I kind of don't. All right. We're going to follow the plan. We're going to star killer this, but I'm always, this, this is not foolproof. But everything else is kind of spoken for except for JML and I need to keep him for the back wall just in case. Opening move is unpredictable, and we need to be... Okay. Okay. Not a terrible opening. This is gonna be bad. Jeez. Alright, this is terrible. Okay. Alright. Do I really have to jam this? We can't stun Chewie or Han in CLS right now. I'm in a basic. This, this is the type of thing that starts being affected by having fewer GLs. Is it forces tough choices, and when they don't work, fine. Now, I need to beat this with something cheaper. How well modded is this? South plus 100 speed, so it's 335. We're not gonna outspeed that. All right, fine. We're sticking to my dumb plan. Because everyone else has a unit. Mm. The alternative is I use Wampa here and not on the Mon Mothma team I'm expecting on the back wall. No, we're still following the plan. It's a dumb plan. I should have used Maul up against... It's just Maul against CLS is just as risky. I just don't have the relics that I need for the Star Killer.
just auto this. So my plan with Maul was, well, not Maul, I mean gas. Now we need to do things the way I was planning. Cause then we use gas up against Maul. It's just, I'm thinking about Qui-Gon, how I'm gonna get through Qui-Gon now. to work. I'm gonna put that on the crown and massage. If you can just that's enough for me, removing the variance from that counter. Actually I just don't know if it would. Maybe it actually makes some of it harder to do. I don't know. I need to think about this. I'm trying to keep a JKR team. Hermit Yoda. I hate it. So we'll probably lose Ezra right away. Good things. The tough part is, like, I need my fleet to hold because he's not going to have the same difficult choices as I'm going to have because he has four GLs for offense. He's just going to... All my tough teams, he's going to clear with a GL. So if my fleet doesn't hold, then we're... then I don't really have a path to victory. All right. What am I gonna do with this? Like, I have, this is a problem, this squad. Because I need, oh, you know what? No, this wasn't a problem. I should have used Jedi Knight Revan, but now I can't use Jedi Knight Revan because I just compromised it by taking away Jolie. Because I forgot that I that would have been the best option, but I wasn't thinking at the time. Because I'm off path. I'm off path. How would... There's no way Savage would work for this, right? No, the armor, sh the armor shreds would destroy it. See, the problem 
is I have to use gas to get through through mall. What's my bounty hunter situation? I hate it. I think we're gonna do it anyway. The only thing that I'm thinking with this is taking out Qui-Gon will trigger Anakin, he'll blow us up, and, but we'll get through it. And it'll, it'll, it's a path forward. I should have Jedi Knight Revan, this is what I should have done. I was just thinking too many Jedi with JML. All right, we're gonna do it. Hate it. All right. Clear the foresight. Now, do I want the contract or do I want to take JML out? I don't know. If, I think I just want to take Qui Gon out. Not JML, Qui Gon. Yeah, we lose Zam. We're about to lose our boy here. their job now we're gonna try something that is reckless but it worked the other day we'll see if it works again It's just there's way more relic levels on this squad than there was. The yeah, it's over. Yeah, I'm just gonna let it happen. Remove 5% turn meters, just not enough. I'm doing it anymore. Because I'd rather try and blow up, and we're not going to blow up anybody. What am I even talking about? So close. They got to fix that. Did I have a use for JTR Swallow? There's no use for JTR Swallow. We don't really have a, let's just JTR Swallow this. We'll probably lose a few of these bodies. This is just not a defense in a roster that I have 
the benefit of wiggle room with. That's fine. All right, we're gonna dis or remove turn meter there. We'll throw an armor shred on Anakin. Now we're good. Why can't we? St Did I click? What is going on here? Who doesn't let me stealth? I don't know. I with the foresight on JTR, did I misclick? Or did like Mace take a turn, throw Shatterpoint, and mess up my stuff? All right, we just need this back wall to be the same. The rest of this will be clean. This was a. My strategy for this needed a little luck that we did not get. Yeah, this is what I expected to see. Oh, except we I wanted to use JKR and droids up against Dash, which... Fine. Okay, we're going to get to work on the rest of this and execute... This is what Wampa was saved for. thing I really could have done was gamble on using JML to start and keep my star killer because I was pretty confident that he didn't change his strategy but but I didn't want to I wanted the insurance of keeping him which we didn't even get to do which is auto My brother just sent me his job of progress. I'm just checking that out. Because I just finished the farm on Bosch. Did a bunch of re extra refreshes during double drops and really cut the lead that Lando had on, on the shards. Not quite there on all the gear I need though, but we're probably by the end of the month, I can probably unlock or be working towards unlocking Java. Okay. Let me... Yeah, we need to manually do this, because I could have swiped there and have taken him out. Okay, there we go. What you need is a counter to take him out once and then a turn so you can hit him when he has no buffs. Which sometimes in the auto doesn't take some time to happen. All right.
The plan here is a nest solo, which should be fine. I guess there is. Rolo is who scares me the most, so I'm gonna focus in on her. She is capable of messing this all up. But we don't have Captain Han with his days. And we'll probably be countering a lot. The faster these guys are, the better it is for me. Because this, the more time I'll spend countering with protection up. Revive is just going to waste time. Now here we might need to be a tiny bit careful. Okay. We're just going to do all of our solos right now. We got another one with Vader. There's just one nuance to this in order to pull it off. And that's when we no longer... So they'll take me out and then I'll revive. All right. And now the portion that we need to be careful with is we need to never basic star killer. As long as that happens, we're fine. And I'm just gonna go through and make sure we're real safe with the dots. We don't, it's not until we, there's fewer guys on the board that we need to worry about the basic issue. Really, things are fine until there's only three bodies left. Because then we're not going to get enough dots for the immediate refresh. And really, we're fine. I could just... See, like now that there's only three, we don't get it immediately. He needs to take his turn. We've got another solo coming up, although it's not going to be all that significant. We're going to Savage this. I brought in Savage because 
it would have worked to get up against an Ami one. Now in this scenario, it's not impressive. It's just gonna. It's fine. We could. I could have done something else. Just there's no real data crime for him. I'm just gonna find some other stats. I don't want him to dodge. That's not gonna help. We'll take the crit damage. damage starts stacking it it'll become more and it'll become faster Shores, okay. Now it'll go faster because Shores is healing and complicating the overpower. I've done this up against some Ami versions, and it's It's been fine on the, all the lower gear ones. I, I don't know about the relic ones. Because there's a chance that with the stacking damage that and stats that Aiden puts out that eventually it might cause problems. Where are you? Focus on who you need to focus on. That's the end of the solos. We're doing gas trea. Let's just do it. Let's just get to work. Get rid of the frenzy from Maul. Let's get turn meter. I'd rather take a bunch of turns right now. Bam's gonna start triggering his stuff.
Shame. Oh my god. Take your turn. Whistling birds is a mistake. Alright, we got aerial advantage next turn. Do the turn meter since we can't take him out right now. I'm a little worried about the clock. He's taking his turn. Maul's gonna do some damage. We, I need Rex to take out Bam. There's the sacrifice. Here we come on, buddy. All right. Took some time, but we're fine. This is tri this I've been talking about this in the past few videos. I'm gonna be a little I'm a little concerned about the Omicron, I should say, is what I should really emphasize here. Because what do I wanna do? It's Dooku Sith Marauder. Dooku's probably the better option. The Omicron, I don't know how it's going to affect this, because I think most of the time that I've done this, there hasn't been an Omicron on Radis. And I kind of need this to work. I like having Trooper here, because that pre-taunt helps. Because I don't want them going after Scion too early. Like, I don't want I don't want to do it yet. I wanna I wanna buy some time. Alright. Throw the isolate on Radis. It'll nullify some of the assisting, some of the other issues. Alright. Now I'm going to do the AoE. Throw pain, start affecting the cooldowns. throwing an ability block over there. Next turn we can take out Radis and probably just target Radis. Okay, now 
Perfect. Now we want to take out Jin. Because she can revive. I feel like Sith Empire Trooper is an important member of this. And if I had him at Relics, we wouldn't be losing him, but he's... I feel like he helps a lot in us getting to this point. We're gonna get, we're gonna get Hatred in a minute. And th this is just one thing that I'm a little... You know what? This is a thing where once we throw the Treya Omicron on, I don't know how worth it this is going to be. And it's something I'm, I'm, I'm wondering about. Because this is a really nice counter right now. To take out because this squad, you do need to use the right kind of team up against, otherwise, it starts causing a lot of, a lot of problems. And this is probably like the weakest counter that works. Clears up this. We just got that one last thing to deal with. A rough start, but we've had a. Oh, that's probably a little early to say, but the rest of the plan has been working. After a rough start of not getting the RNG I wanted. We're going to follow the plan here. The plan of Jedi Knight Revan, I'm... We're still going to do it. Even though I've severely hampered it. Right, or let's, let's think about this. If it's not Revan, it's what? My own dash... It's Padme, it's Troopers. It's, what did I just click on? It's like Hut Cartel, which actually wouldn't be terrible. Might be Bad Batch wouldn't be awful. Maybe not the squad for it though. The AoEs from Dash are gonna be no. The, the AoEs from Dash are gonna just destroy so many squads. We're gonna use this, even though I I need Jolie. I shouldn't have done that. Does he hit through Foresight? I'm gonna assume right now, probably foolishly, that he doesn't hit through Foresight. Yeah, that's what I thought. He does hit through Foresight. So that was dumb. Yeah, I'm pretty. I know I needed Jolie. Please, please, please let me take out Vandor. Just let me do it. Let me do it. Let me do Oh my god, it's not gonna do it. We're not gonna do it.
We might be in trouble. I guess there's my own dash, but I don't have the Omni on dash. I just don't have much left here. And with this preloaded turn meter. This is gonna get messy. This is gonna get real messy. All right, let's see here. Maybe I should keep those guys. That's not a thing. That's just not a thing. All right, we gotta find a way through this. I'm just, all I'm hoping for here is that the turn meter is in favorable position, which I know it's not. Or the cooldowns. Okay, we're gonna we're Yeah, let's get a stack. Please, please let me take him out. We'll need to bring somebody else in to take out Nest, but we're fine. I guess it's possible we could throw in enough armor shreds where we can take out Nest. If I don't lose everybody first. just gonna heal. Or she's just gonna heal. No, oh, that was a waste. I'm just hoping we get lucky with RNG. I guess after we lose Dark Trooper, maybe I'll have enough of a damage boost.
if I don't lose P at first. We could have played things a little differently. Really, it's the JML choice that would have made the biggest difference. A lot of this I would have played exactly the same. Like that Night Sisters Qui Gon, I have no second guessing about that. Alright, what do I want to do here? This is Bounty Hunters, this. Whose contract? Out of turn twenty times. I think Aura sings are best best choice. I might put that Zade on Greedo. I'd like to get that stun. Yeah, let's get rid of the daze. We're gonna call an Orsing for the assist. Hoping we'd get a stun or something. Tenacity is too high on this guy. She's well modded, I assume. We got the contract, so next turn. There we go. Really, it was using Jolie that messed up my JKR counter. JKR would have been fine with that, but. Uh... That was one place where I did go off book, was throwing that Jolie with JMO. Alright. Sh we should be fine here. Ah, come on, man. See, the thing is, with a slow BAM like that, I need to... I really need to sacrifice a fleet. There's a chance it'll go before mine, but I, I don't want to risk it. Because otherwise this could go poorly. I'm just gonna burn a fleet. And what I'm hoping for in this scenario, because he's he's got negotiator, malevolence, and profundity for offense. So I he needs the profundity would need to get bad RNG, which probably won't. And then like he needs to mess up the Chimera counter, which he probably won't.
be so much better if he had more gear on his malevolence. Or not his malevolence, his bad crust. I, I don't want a chance going into the match and then have like the capital ship completely obstructing my view. That would have been bad. We can throw a buff immunity over on. Yeah. This we can't stealth. It's not a big deal. Was he a Ray player? He, he was not a Ray player, right? Yeah, no Ray, so I don't have to worry about that Radis. I might even have the better Radis. But he is a Sith Eternal Emperor player. I'm not sure where he is with the Inquisitors. I feel like I've been lighter on the banter of this video. I've been a little bit more focused on this. Because I want this win. I just... The win is in his hands, not mine. Oops. 
this one again. Okay. Alright, key move is coming up. I try to emphasize this all the time. You have to bring out a reinforcement. The first chance you get with this counter. You know what, let's take out the second sister. Because Chimera is going to have its ultimate real soon. Like next turn should be the ultimate. And I'm going to lose possibly two ships. And you can see in a scenario in which I didn't have a third ship out, then I would have lost this, even though it was looking like I was winning. Like it's critical to bring out an extra ship. That's how it gets holds. It's like you're used to bringing out extra vulture droids, and once that ultimate goes off. got the better Radis. Question is how... No, I think I know what I want. Do I want to do it this? Because what really matters here is Dispel. Do I have Dispel? I don't know if I do. Is it better for me to use my... Let's check his pilots. Mine's better. Mine's already better with the stars. His is slightly better. That's the wrong starting unit. Yeah, we're gonna do resistance, resistance. start. I'm going to stay focused on Rose because I want to get to an advantage quick. Let's get a mass assist. Don't care. Yeah, we are going to re dispel. Bring out my po. Are you kidding me? Same position as each other. Fine, 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 fine. Right. 
but will you have the tank? No. Do I get the ultimate first? Yes! Uh, I, young, my young Lando is is gear 11 now too. I th all my pilots are at least gear 11 as of last sign up. All right. All right. The win is in his hands. It's going to come down to fleets and whether or not how much RNG and if it gets, if I can hold, which I probably can't because he's got everything he needs to win. And with four GLs on offense, he's very likely not going to have a problem with my defense. Whereas like with the GL deficit I had and the defense he set down, I needed to take some chances in order to have enough counters. And I did not get the RNG I needed for that to, to pull that off. All right, we will tack on and end once he attacks. Congrats to Pork Bubbles. He was the better man in this guild matchup. I did get a little help from my defense, just not quite enough. His defense didn't leave me any room for error, and I needed it. I do think there was a path to victory had I used the JML on CLS to start, used JKR up against that Night Sisters and my Star Killer on that back wall. We could have found a way to one-shot this, but it was not something I considered in the pre-match planning. Something I'll think about in the future. Here's how my defense performed. Two shots up against Mon Mothma. I suspect he took Wampa here. He tried using his Wampas, but his Wampa is only Relic 3, which is not quite enough to survive up against Kyle Katarn and Mon Mothma, particularly when modded right. If he adds a couple Relic levels to that Wampa, that's going to cease being an issue. In this territory here, two shots up against CLS. Probably did something similar to me. Took one of his counters, hoping it would work, and didn't, and then clean it up. Back wall, no issues here, but there wasn't really anything problematic in this area. This Sana team, I maybe should have put something real down, but he had enough depth. Like, saving all his GLs for Ovens, going... Uh, None of the teams I put down on defense were going to create any issues with him when he has four GLs on offense. And he still had enough to put down a defense that I had to really respect in order to get through. And then I thought they fixed this. And then he one-shot the board here because he saved a very strong offense for Fleet with the profundity malevolence and negotiator and this is just not going to be enough for that i wonder <laughs> call me crazy but i think we cg needs to add a couple more fleets and add into this more because i've we're we're very quickly going to fill out the profundity they're going to improve other fleets with scythe being unlocked next month and red five on the horizon it's we're this is very quickly going to be insufficient or there's just going to be a lot of players trying to max squads out to make this more of a problem i i think cg needs to be prioritizing capital ships if they can
at least one, like, get a Naboo Starfighter to pay, pair with Mace or something. And we'll wrap it up there. Congrats again to Pork Bubbles for the 3 0 week, stopping me from getting the same, finishing off at 2 and 1. Next week, we will push to climb back into Kyber to finish the season there. Thank you for watching. Be safe out there, everyone. Be excellent to each other. This is still Plays Galaxy of Heroes.